Hi, my name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. A little bit over a year ago, I published on my YouTube channel here two tutorials which were really important for Adobe After Effects users. As I come from the VFX background, I really used to work with EXRs and multi channel EXRs, for example, compositing work inside of Nuke. And for me, it was really important to have also this EXR workflow inside of Adobe After Effects, which is also an important component for much of my work. I found this free plugin Pro EXR 2.0 from FNORT here, and it was open, and I installed it and showed here in these two tutorials how to install this plugin and how to work with that. This plugin was able to read EXRs and also provided a script to split all the channels which are embedded inside of an EXR in separate layers because After Effects need layers for all the work. And it was also able to work with cryptomats. Now with the release of Adobe After Effects 2020, we have now this plugin here in a newer version fully integrated inside of Adobe After Effects. So you don't need to install this plugin anymore because you have now all the functionalities which I show in these tutorials here completely inside of Adobe After Effects. But it's a little bit different and so I thought it's a good point to show the functionalities which are now embedded inside of Pro EXR 2.5 which is included in Adobe After Effects. And if you have more questions about how to work with EXRs here or what CryptoMat is and how you do it, I would recommend that you take a look into these two tutorials. And if you want to have a more in-depth introduction to CryptoMat, I've made one introduction here for CryptoMat uh, from, for example, Houdini FX here. So you can hear a little bit about the CryptoMat workflow. So a big thanks at this point also uh, to Brandon from FNORT for providing these plugins here. And yeah, let's start inside of Adobe After Effects. What I've done is I've first imported a simple EXR, so the old workflow, and I make a comp out of that. So you see that's the comp here of my EXR. And what you see here is a 3D rendering from Houdini. And I've embedded, like I do normally in my VFX workflow, all the passes which I need for later comp inside of this EXR. If you place it now like this here, you only have one layer here and you see this so named beauty pass, so the AGBA data which you normally work with. But I know that in this EXR we have all the other passes and the normal way you extract this is using the extractor effect, which is a part of Pro XR. So if you select the layer here, you go to Effects, go to 3D Channel, and here's the Extractor. And if you are an After Effects user, you will see that this new version here looks a little bit more sexy. And you now can select here the layer. So if you click here the layer, you see all the layers which I've embedded here. And one important note about these layers, every renderer renders its layers different. So every renderer like V-Ray, for example, or Mantra, Renderman, and so on, has a different approach to comping these layers. So this is only one example how it would look if you render this. I think this is Mantra. So what I want to extract as an example now would be I want to have first the diffuse amount and then I want to have the indirect diffuse because it's GI, so the indirect illumination, and I want to have the reflections. And the tedious process now would be, because this is After Effects, that I first have to extract now the right layer. I can be silly and say, okay, I want to have all diffuse, so it's direct and indirect at the same point. And this is something I want to do for this example. We later want to look into a more complex example. So I say all diffuse. And after selecting here the layer, you see that now the channels here are separate, shuffled out of this data stream. One side note at this, sometimes a layer has three channels but they are not meant to work as an image, for example, because it's a multi-mat. In a multi-mat, I store in a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel, different mats, and they don't really bring an image. It's only a data container. So what you are able to do is you can say, okay, I only want to have, for example, here in red, this information, but in the other layer here, something else or nothing or the same. So if I go in here, 
I can select now which exact layer or better to say which exact channel here I want to have. So this is a little side note at this point. So after we have now the diffuse here, it looks diffuse. I need a duplicate of this layer. So a command D to have a duplicate of this. And then I say, I want to have, for example, now my reflect layer. And after I've added now my reflect layer, you see this reflect layer is now everywhere. And depending on the way the renderer thinks and your layer stack is meant, you have now to find the right mode. And this stack here is additive. So I go here to this layer here and I change my mode to add. And inside of After Effects, I can use add or screen. Depends a little bit how you want to have the look of that. I select add here and now you see now we have reflection here on this layer here and so on. So you make a copy of all of that and then you have your stack and you can manipulate now every layer by your own. And this is a really tedious process and the ProXR 2.0 plugin introduced a script for that and this was really cool. But if you now take a look here on, on the file, you don't see the script anymore. It's gone. So it's not there. So to have the same idea that you get an automatic extraction of all the layers, you can do the following thing. So I get rid of all this stuff here to make it a little bit more clear. And I make a double click here into my project window to load now. And I select my wire pick here, my EXR. And the only thing you have to do is you have to tell now the system, I want to have a composite of that. And if you have an image sequence, don't forget the open XR sequence, but we have here still. So composition, that's it. And then we say do it. And now we have a little import dialog where we can now make sure that we get exactly what we want, pre-compose the layers. And I also want to have a contact sheet. That's great. I say do it. And now it takes a while and the result is this time a folder here. And if you open up the folder here, you see this is our EXR, which is important. And then we have a whole bunch of comps here. And the cool thing is the first thing I normally do is I want to see the contact sheet. And here is the contact sheet. So make a double click. And the idea behind the contact sheet is that every layer which is embedded inside of the EXR has now its own place on this contact sheet. And you can see them now side by side. And also for animation, this works great. So you can see what's going on inside of these layers. And if you're now interested, for example, in this funny thing here, you can select it, you see it's the normal or you can solo it to really see, okay, that's the normal layer here inside of that. And it's a good help to understand what's inside of your EXR. Okay, the next thing which we have here is now the assemble. And if you make a double click of the assemble, you see this is now the extracted data of all the different layers inside of the EXR as a big stack. So if you have a EXR like I have with many of these layers, this is really convenient. You see here on the top, this is our beauty pass. I can make everything invisible here. And now I can do the same thing like I've done before. I say, I want to have, for example, all the diffuse here. So I activate this, this is all diffuse. And then I want to have all the reflect like we've done before, make this visible here. Then we have to go here and say, okay, I want to have this here additive. And now we have the same result only with two clicks. So extremely convenient. You can delete here everything which you don't need. And you also can do the stuff by your own because these here are all pre-composed layers. That means if you now want to change something inside of these here or you want to build everything by your own, you can open now this folder here and here are all the pre-composed extractions. And I say, for example, I want to work, let's say, with the diffuse. So I take here the direct diffuse, not the all diffuse, this time the direct diffuse. I make a new comp out of that. Okay, now we have it. So this is only the direct diffuse. And then I take here the indirect diffuse to have the GI separate. Okay, I add it over that. And you see this is the GI, the indirect light. And again, we have to add this. Yeah, and now you see with and without the GI. And so I can now make my own layer stack here. I take the direct reflect first, 
and then we need the indirect reflect second okay here it is i select both of these layers make them add again and now i can see i've built my beauty pass here with these four comps here but now i'm able to go into that here and say yeah let's show me the direct reflection i like it but i want to change something with the help of effect or curves or whatever you want to do or i need more indirect light here you can select this now here and say i want to have for example curves and now i can change here for example the curves for that and you see it really works like uh, you are used to work but you haven't had the work to add everything by hand so this is um, the way you work with multi-channel exrs now the next topic we want to talk about is cryptomat so for this pick here let's make a simple comp only the pick exr here i want to now extract mats because i want to work for example for different materials here and i want to change for example the appearance here of this material here for this i've rendered out a crypto mat exr and if you want to know how it works i've showed you my other tutorials about crypto mat so i select this this time we want to have this as a footage and we don't need this here again so this is footage and i add now my crypto mat here and the first side is it's black nothing visible here the reason for this is inside of cryptomat there are special layers which are used now to extract data and they are not really human readable but if you want to see now what's inside of this cryptomat layer you select the layer and you go back to your effects 3d channel and here's now the cryptomat effect also integrated directly in after effects 2020 so cryptomat and the moment you do that suddenly you see here colors to understand now a little bit what's going on in cryptomat you can decide in your 3d program for what you want to have cryptos for example the typical thing is you want to have every material later in your comp and also maybe every object and you can have as many other selection methods as you want to see what's going on inside of this crypto you have to click here in this area and this is not really obvious you see if I go with my mouse here in this area here, suddenly you see my mouse cursor changes. So you have to click here once and then you get a dialog. And here, like I've said, are the different layers which are now embedded inside of this crypto. And I've embedded only materials and objects. So you can select here now what you want to work with. And they are different. So I switch here from the crypto material to object here and then I click OK. And you will see that this year now directly changes because now I see the cryptos only for the objects and I do only have two objects inside of this crypto, my backdrop and the pick here. Now to pull a mask out of that, the next step is you have to make a selection and you saw that inside of this dialog we had a selection field here. But yeah, the hashes look a little bit strange, so you can copy and paste them. They are text, but they are not really obvious how the naming here is. So to do that now, after you've selected the right layer, you hover with your mouse while the effect is selected here over your viewport, and you then can click here on one of these colored objects. And the moment you do that, you see I've now selected here the pick. It's white now and you get the selection tag here like i've said they are not really human readable if you want to add now something here you can hold down your shift key and you see your mouse cursor changes you get a little plus sign and i also can add the backdrop which doesn't make any sense in the moment because now we selected both of these but i can show you now how to remove something you hold down your control key and you see this little scissor and if you click now here this here is now removed from your selection so this is one way of working doesn't make too much sense here for this pick so what i do is i switch back here to my materials and now he said yeah this doesn't exist so go back to the materials i say yeah do it and now you see we have three different colors because i use three different materials inside of this 3d scene and i want to select here 
this copper. So I click here on this copper object and everything which has the material copper is now selected. That's great. And to work now with that, I change my output. I tell now the system, okay, I don't want to see the color output, which is really convenient to work with, but not useful in my case here. And I want to generate now a mat. So I get a black and white mat like you're used to. I can name now this layer, for example, copper. And then I can make it invisible. So what I now can do is I can go in here and select, for example, my wire pick here and say, use the mask. It's a Luma mask copper. And I only see now the copper inside here of my viewport. So you have now really pulled a mask. Or what you also can do is you can make now a right mouse button click, make an adjustment layer here. And I say copper adjust. Okay. Then we need an effect on it. So let's take again curves. I go to red and I push my red up here. But now it's everything. So what we need now is we need our mask here on top. And I say, make this only for the copper. And that's it. And now you can work here only on the copper without the rest. So that's the way now this system here works. There's one last plugin which also has changed because of the integration of ProX up 2.5. I select this here really fast to show you. And this is the identifier here. So if you have object ID passes here inside of your file, you can now use this new dialog. So that's it for today. I hope this helps you and shows you how Pro XR 2.5 is integrated in After Effects 2020. My name is Helge Maus from Pixel Train. Have fun.